Hey, this is Derek. Tonight I'm going to try to make a pretty simple and quick dystopian book cover. So I'm going to talk kind of what that process looks like and then show you how to make one in Photoshop. So the author actually put together a quick mock-up. This is kind of what she had in mind, um, which has, there's this white tower in the background, there's trees, title, one main character standing here. Um, that's kind of the right layout for dystopia. And I found some images that might work. But I've also found some comp titles. So you want to look for design, inspiring design that's similar to what you're going for. Um, in my personal case, I took these two covers that I like a lot, and they're actually fantasy covers. So that's not really a smart thing to take fantasy covers. Um, the main difference between fantasy and dystopia, though, is the font. So I'm going to use a much stronger sans serif blocky font that's a little bit sci-fi-ish. Um, but in terms of, you know, one central character, a lot of color, and this really nice glow around the character, that's kind of what I'm what I'm going for. Um, it's something that I really like the look of. I'll just make it more sci-fi with the right fonts. So we're going to start with this really glowy, naturistic, naturistic background. So it fills the space kind of like that. Then I'm going to throw in a vignette layer. And I'll set that to multiply. Multiply just allows the darks to come through without the lights. So that just dims the borders a little bit. And I might actually duplicate that one and go with something a little stronger like color burn. Um, and these trees are a little bit too stretched out, but I'm hoping it's not really going to matter once I add some more details. So I'm going to throw in some ruined buildings off to the side, which is common for apocalyptic, and then I'll add some cracks over the ground here. I have this stock photo of just um, rubble and stuff. So I'm going to set that to luminosity so that the colors blend through. And then I'm just going to take an eraser file and kind of get it off to the side of the street. I'm going to reuse some of that later, so I'll duplicate half of that and then take out the sky. So here's some cracks I can set to multiply. And then if I do perspective, it's not quite going to work, but it might work a little bit. Let me see if I can add a tree in the middle of the road, and then I'm going to add this big white tower back behind it. So I added some more stuff, but I can already tell that this is going to be too much detail and too messy. Um, I'm already losing out on that kind of really subtle color wash um, that I appreciate from these other things. You can see in the background, like the trees are there, but they're really washed out. Kind of same with this one. There's a little bit of detail, but it's, you know, just trees. It's a danger when you design book covers um, to go into the details of this story too much. You really want to keep it pretty simple and focus on... Um, the mood and the genre. The mood is colors and contrast, and the genre is font. So as long as you get those right, um, the details don't really matter as much. And also the tree is probably overkill because I'm going to put um, the main figure in the center here, and that tree is probably not going to show up anyway. So I added a tower up here with a little bit of light. Um, now what the problem is going to be is that there's too many different colors happening, so I'm going to have to decide what my main color scheme is going to be. Um, I can actually do that now by just going to layer, new fill layer, and solid color. Um, and I'll just pick something to start off with, but then I can play around and change the colors later. So with a different blend mode, I can see um, how this would look in different colors. 
but I'm just gonna go down to probably color saturation or hue it also is just kind of helpful to see how the overall design looks without you know being distracted by the colors so I've got a good start I'm gonna try adding in um, a central character I've done a little bit of research um, in the original there's this stock photo um, and for a lot of dystopia it's kind of just a girl standing there without a weapon so I'm gonna try something kind of like that I have a couple stock photos that I pulled um, that might work that are super simple nothing going on with her hands or anything um, it's a little boring but dystopian is allowed to be a little boring and looking at these you know the um the title is on the bottom so there's more space on top for the main character I prefer actually to have my title up on top but that kind of squeezes the space down for the main character something to consider she doesn't have legs anyway so it's okay to kind of keep her a little bit down um, the solution if I wanted to raise her up would just be to darken all the bottoms so that her legs don't show up or add some texture or something the main character in this book is actually blonde so I found a pretty good um, model and I'm gonna do a head swap a head swap is just where you take the head and put it on a new body I think this one's gonna work pretty well I leave the old head from the original just so that I can make sure that I get the head the right size. It's kind of a challenge sometimes. So I would go to the transparency and make it about half transparent and then try to line up the eyes and the mouth and just make sure that it's about the same size. It's going to be a little different because the angle of the head is different, um, but even by like the distance between the chin and the eyes, I can tell that this is too small. So about like that. She has a really different shaped head and the angle is pretty different so it's a little hard to match. But um, I can see that her hair is so big, so the head's about the right size. It's difficult to get all of the nice glowing hair to look the same once I erase everything. Um, one of the ways I can do that, if I duplicate this layer, And I have one layer just going to lighten or screen. That's going to let that hair stand out a little bit. So that I could delete this back layer. And some of that hair might still show up. So, so far this head uh, looks pretty bad, but a lot of that is just the coloration. It looks like it's still a little bit too big, so I've got to move it down a little bit. Um, there's some problems with like this dark hair coming out underneath, but some of that I could fix with um, adding some more hair over it. And then some of it is just color, so if I fiddle with the color a little bit to try to match her body tone. Um, actually, her body tone is a little bit too red, so I'm going to change that. So this is starting to look plausible, at least, like this could be a fit. Um, I think her head's still a little bit too big. It's kind of hard to do it by sight. I try to match like her hands with her head a little bit. So that looks pretty close to right. 
and then I want to add a little bit of um, glow. It's tricky with glow because whatever wherever you put the glowing light, that's where the eye is going to focus. So like right now, I have this bright light up here in the sky. Um, so if I put some glow lights down here around her, it's going to distract the focus of the cover. Um, but I'm going to do it anyway. So if I go to layer and have a new layer, you can change your colors um, later on. So this is mostly just about getting the light. And you can change things with um, opacity or the hue and the saturation. But the idea is just to get a little bit of the lighting to look like it's coming through into the foreground. Oops. Some people will make this um, a lot heavier. Some people add a really strong lit rim light, which is like an outline around the whole thing. Um, I could actually do something similar just by going to layer style, inner glow, um, but I probably won't. It can look really good to get your character to stand out a little bit more if there's light coming from behind her, um, but only if you've got a really clean, cleanly cropped out um, character. I might add just like a tiny bit. But then you got to be careful, like back here, the, the hair that I didn't delete well enough stands out too strongly. I still don't have a ton of light behind her, um, so the other thing that I can do is go back to my character and go layer style uh, outer glow. Um, and then this light is also going to help when I start adding some some texture and stuff. So you don't kind of want to go too heavy handed. I actually like uh, I like my characters a little bit more subtle. Um, but having the extra glow really does help it to stand out. It also will show you like where I haven't deleted background stuff well enough, so you can quickly go back and just start cleaning up um, little spots that you've missed. I'm going to grab some textures and throw them in and see how they look. Sometimes this is a process of experimentation to find out uh, what works and what doesn't. And the texture just gives it kind of like a little bit of movement. So the other element that's still missing, this is sort of, um, there's a time element where the characters know how much time they have left before they die. So she needs some kind of a cool techno gadget watch um, and then some kind of a big timepiece behind her. I also added this layer, which is just um, smoke, basically. And I just played around with the lighting until it gives just a little bit of a um, wispy glow. It not only makes the background a lot darker, but it also makes um, some really interesting stuff happen with that light that I added. It looks a little bit too fantasy, so that may not be great, but it's probably okay because it looks pretty cool. Um, I'm actually going to duplicate that so that I can delete the half of one. It's a bit too strong on the top half. But I want to keep some of that um, 
bottom half. So by having two layers, I can play around with, you know, how strong is the effect. So here's kind of a countdown clock thing. Um, I'm not sure if this is going to work. It's definitely a lot more um, sci-fi. Sometimes just by playing with the blending modes you'll find uh, that it looks really good in certain situations. I'm not quite sure if that's going to work, but it might work. Um, I might get rid of the time or figure out, like, I don't know how that can look a little bit better. And then I'll delete these extra numbers down here. Yeah, I'm not sure yet about that time. I might delete it. I might not. It's distracting to have too much text on the cover. So like that 2345 sounds like could be a detail in the book, but it's not really communicating anything um, on the cover. And it's going to distract from the actual text. For now, I'm just going to duplicate the layer. Um, that way I can go back if I need to. And then I'm going to delete this. which means that I could also duplicate this layer again and then make that top level texture a little bit stronger. I'm not sure I like this red up here. Um, it's definitely eye-catching. It also makes this hand look really red. So kind of like there's a cool thing going on where your eyes will be drawn to the same colors, um, but it's also kind of distracting, so I might just desaturate that level. Haven't really decided yet. Um, I do kind of like this greenish color up there. So the other problem is I'm running out of space to put the title text, um, which could be a problem. So let me throw in some of that. So I started with just Bayvast New, which is a really simple font. I can already see I'm going to be able to do something kind of cool with, I'll have the up here in the circle, and then Chronicles will go a little bit behind her head. Um, and that's an okay starting point, but this really isn't a strong enough font, I think. It's a, I mean, for dystopian thriller, it's not terrible. It's a good starting point, but we can do something for sci-fi that's um, more obvious and more attention-grabbing, although it might work for the author name. Um, and if I put the name on the bottom, which, as I said, I like to do, um, since it's going to take up a little bit too much space. I also like to have a lot of... Um, spacing between my author name, so I don't like it to be too big. But even so, I'm going to have to probably move her up a little bit and then fade out some of this background um, area on the bottom. To fade stuff out on the bottom um, is pretty easy to do. You can just go to Layer, New Fill Layer, Gradient, And then just start with something like this. Um, which already looks fine, actually. All I've done is given a little bit of a, a fade at the bottom. Um, but then I lose her hand, so I'd like her hands to be present, so I'll have to move her up a little bit more later. Um, but for now, that's not a bad start. Um, I'm going to go back up to the fonts and keep playing with those. 
So here's one sci-fi font option um, that I kind of like, but I feel like it should be taller than this one, especially because I have these really long words so that um, it takes up a lot more space. So it would be, I could have bigger text that would fit a little better if they were taller and wider. Um, I want to avoid the impulse to do free transform and just scale it like that. Um, Sometimes you can get away with it, but that is usually a giveaway of amateur design if, if things are squeezed and pulled um, in different directions from how they should be. It's pretty easy actually just to Google sci-fi fonts, and I like to look at the images so I can see what these will look like. Um, that way I can really quickly go through and try to find something that I think fits the project I'm working on. You do want something that's easy to read. So hopefully it's cool looking and sci-fi looking, but is also um, clean enough that it looks like, I mean, that it's easy to read. So I downloaded a few fonts. Um, when you're installing fonts, you'll usually see OTF and TTF. OTF is the newer format that probably has a little bit of extra function. So that's the one that you want to go with. So here's some of the stuff that I found. Um, this one I really like. It's a really nice looking sci-fi font. It's just, it's not very bold. It's a little bit harder to read, especially this Chronicles part. Um, so I'd be tempted to keep this death day and mix it with one of the other simpler fonts. So for example, um, this one is also fine, but kind of boring. So I could make it a lot bigger. Um, and it's a pretty nice, clean sci-fi font. But I think if I switch out this death day with the other font, that's a little bit cooler. You want to be careful of mixing up fonts because it doesn't always go well. Um, and it can be distracting. But if you have a, if you have one font with a lot of character and then a more simple, basic, easy to read font, then it sometimes is okay. So we could do something kind of like that. It's kind of hard to center everything too. Um, it'd be almost nicer down here. And then on this one, something kind of cool happened where Death Day was split. Um, and you don't actually have to be able to read Chronicles, even if it's like pretty far behind her. It um, doesn't really matter because you can still guess what the word means. And it's kind of hard to line everything up exactly. Um, but it's kind of interesting, so I'm, I'm curious about that. I might play around with that one some more. And the other thing you can do, once you kind of have an idea of what fonts you want, you can try out some text styles. So if I go back to this one, um, over here I have my Styles tab. You can get different styles for different kinds of things. But I have a bunch of sci-fi styles, and a lot of them are too, too much. Um, I'm not a fan of really heavy text effects or drop shadow or anything like that. You kind of just want the text to stand out. I'm also not a fan, like once I put on this heavy effect, it kind of drowns out everything else um, and it kind of covers up her a bit, especially for sci-fi. I'd almost rather not um, do that. Let me try that again. So if I use a font like this, um, it's not really overwhelming the art. It looks kind of okay. I haven't tried any text effects yet. Um, I might just do like a very simple glow or something on one of those letters. Here's one, for example, that's probably too much. Um, and it doesn't really go with this white with the simple drop shadow, but it kind of fits in, like the colors kind of fit in with the background art, so it's not terrible. And then I can go down and kind of see if I want to get rid of any of these individual ones. So I'm still playing with the fonts. Um, I do like this big sci-fi font. 
I think it looks pretty good, but I'm having trouble with the smaller text. So one of the problems is up here I can use the white text and get away with it, but down here the white text doesn't look so good because there's a white sky background. So I would have to add um, a drop shadow, which is okay, but it kind of takes away from the really awesome title font and the texture because now this stands out a little bit more. So one of the other options is to use natural contrast where I could go down here and just use a darker color from somewhere else. Um, without any other effects, it stands out pretty nicely. I could add a little bit of a glow behind it, but I don't really need to. Um, and that's okay. I don't love how there's white up here and the dark down here, but I do kind of like this dark text against um, the white background. Now that I kind of know where my font might be though, I can go back and see if I can change the layout a little bit. Um, so I can probably make my main character a little bit bigger. I don't know if I'm gonna leave this thing. It was kind of a countdown that I put on her shirt. Um, the red does stand out. It kind of looks cool, but it's probably a little bit overkill. So like I mentioned, I can move her up higher, but then this down here kind of disappears, which is fine actually, because it's so dark, I can just go back in with a, um, like a black paintbrush and just cover most of that up. Or I could even just paint really roughly where her legs would go. I could also just like copy the bottom of her legs and then drag it down. But um, this is the kind of thing where unless you're looking at it with a microfine glass, you're probably not going to see um, anything weird. So it mostly looks okay. Um, there's some still some cleaning and stuff to do. The other thing I like to do, I'll do real quick, is to get her eyes to stand out. A little bit more. Um, you can tell like I didn't trim the edges of this character that much. This is a stock photo. I need to go back and buy the actual um, image to use it. But with her eyes, there's different ways um, of doing this. So one way is probably just um, grabbing a paintbrush Deciding what color you want her eyes to be, I think I'll make them green, because they're kind of already green. And up here in my paintbrush, I can go to something like soft light, maybe. Um, I should actually make a new layer. And if I do something like that, and then I change the blend mode, um, I can change her color pretty easily. So I'll try that again. Once I have that layer, I can go over here to hue saturation and I can change um, the eye color really quickly. I don't really know what I'm going to leave it as. Um, it looks pretty good, like pink or red or something, but I don't know that I want to do that at this point. So this is getting pretty close to finished. A um, couple things. The title looks okay, but it doesn't really stand out as well as I would like. Um, and this Chronicles is a little bit flat. The Chronicles is kind of flat. I should use some kind of text effect. Um, there's also some weirdness because this is, even though it's a pretty simple font, this is still a really stylistic sci-fi font, um, which clashes a little bit with this other sci-fi font. 
it's not great to have different fonts with different text treatment. Um, and if you can get away, the, the going from white to dark is a little bit weird too. So if you can get away from that, that's better. So it needs a little tweaking still, but um, it's a pretty strong start. If you go with the blue, this is definitely more sci-fi. Um, Post-apocalyptic dystopian covers are often more yellow. So now I can just remove this blue layer and I actually get some really nice colors up here on the top, um, which I kind of like. So I could just leave it that way um, or I could change this color layer to a different color and try some different blend modes. Um, the other thing we can do up at this point is go up to window adjustments and then choose, for example, vibrance and saturation. We'll need to make sure that this is up above the other layers. And we don't want it to be oversaturated. Um, and like most sci-fi is kind of more subtle and understated anyway. On the other hand, you do need your book cover to really stand out um, on Amazon. So it helps to think a little bit about, you know, the color and the saturation and like, does it really grab your attention? I'm gonna go back and see what I can do with that blue layer. Yeah, so it's probably oversaturated at this point. Um, I might change this layer to just like a a yellow or something. And I'd have to put it above some of these other layers. Oops. Yeah, so now you can, I mean, you could even test out with a beta reader group, like which color variation do you like? the best because this is a pretty significant um, difference between, for example, the yellow or the blue. They're both pretty nice. I could also like put them down to kind of half and kind of see how they are combined. Anyway, that's looking pretty good. I did want to try one other thing though. She looks still pretty contemporary. So if this is like dystopian survival, um, which it kind of is, then I might want something that's a little more badass and a little more futuristic. So let me see what that looks like. Um, I can go down to my main character and I'll just kind of finish her for now. Um, and instead I found this kind of cool post-apocalyptic something. So I did try a head swap. You can see that um, it's a little bit off still. The lighting is a little bit different from the background. I would have to um, put her head down below some of these color layers to make it fit with the background. Um, but otherwise, this body looks pretty good. Um, it's just that, like I've added a lot of strong light. This is just the inner glow. I haven't done any outlining or any detail work. Um, like I said, it doesn't match the head, but this could work if it was kind of a Mad Max post-apocalyptic sci-fi cover, which it kind of is, but um, isn't exactly. So then it's the point where like that other girl that I had, the really simple girl, um, I'll, I'll show side by side so you can see the difference. So here's kind of how they look side by side. Um, actually, I prefer this one. I think the color is really nice. The lighting does need some fixing, but there's a lot more action adventure going on. That Her pose is a lot more interesting, um, but it looks a little more like Mad Max survival dystopia stuff, whereas this one definitely looks more sci-fi. Um, with the blue and with the kind of passive pose. So I think either of these two would probably be a good choice. They might attract different readers. Um, there's a point where you can communicate what the book actually is and what it's about, and or you can use the strongest cover that's gonna appeal to the most people. So I would guess that's probably this one. Once